Hey guys, let's look at uh, what's called trinomials with common factors. And before we do that, let's look at two things. And uh, go ahead and pause it and write that top um, expression there and with three terms. And uh, go ahead and factor it. That's an oldie. You should be able to do that. So pause it and factor it. Okay, I'm hoping you pulled out a 3 from this. Then you recognize that they all had X's. Then you recognize that they all had A's. And then you pulled that out and again, okay. So 3X saved, if you divide this by that, you get a 2, you get a B. Then you have a negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. And then X divided by X is 1. A squared divided by A is just A. And then 15 divided by 3 is 5. Then you have an XAC divided by XA, which gives you just C left. And there you go. And that's all you can do. All right. So in other words, we factor out the greatest common factor. We know how to do that. The second way, which we did last time, was factoring trinomials. So we can look at this and go, okay, we need two numbers. Of course, we can just put X here and X here. And those two numbers, the puzzle is the two numbers add up to give you negative 8. And they multiply to give you negative 48. So if it multiplies to give you a negative, you know one's a positive and one's a negative. So what factors of negative 48 are there that will also multiply, excuse me, add to give you negative 8? And the answer is a 4 and a negative 12. Those multiply to give you negative 48 and add 4 plus negative 12 is negative 8. Boom, we got it. All we're going to do this week with these is combine these two. So you're going to get something that looks like this at first. You will pull out the greatest common factor. Then you'll be left with a trinomial like this, and then you'll just factor it again into that. So you'll just do both of those kind of factoring in one problem. So let's look at one. Of course, you can pause and, and copy this down. All right. Well, if you notice, we're not used to factoring trinomials that one, one is to the third power. We're just used to factoring ones like this when the first one is to the second power. But if you look at this, this has an x, there's an x, and there's an x. So we can pull out of this an x. So if we do that, what are we left with? You tell me. If you pull an x out, first term is x to the second. Second term, 6x. The last term, just 5. Okay? So now we have one of those trinomials that looks like the last page. So we leave the x there. It stays with it. Now we just treat this trinomial is if we can factor it like two binomials, which we can. And this is pretty easy. There are only two numbers that can multiply to give you five, five and one. And of course, those two do add up to six. And there you go. And don't forget, this stays with it. You do multiply this, this binomial and that one by the x total. So that's it. Okay, let's try another one. And go ahead, again, pause this and copy it down. All right, well, again, you. Looking at these, you know, you're going to get to know that your goal is to get this into a trinomial that you can factor out like this one we just did a minute ago. Okay, and, and that's what happens in this one as well. So if you look first at the numbers, you get a 4, a negative 4, and a negative 80. Well, of course, 4, you can pull out of those. The B is in all three of those as well, so you can pull out the B. And X cubed, X squared, and X first, of course, you can pull out an X as well. All right? When you do that... Everything gets pulled out. You have x cubed divided by x, which is x squared. You have a minus. You don't need to write negative 4 divided by 4 is 1. You don't need to do that. A b divided by b is just 1. x squared divided by uh, x is just x. This is a negative 80 divided by 4, which is negative 20. Then bx divided by bx is just 1. No sense in writing 20 times 1. Just leave it at 20. Okay. Now we have this, and now we have a trinomial. So let's focus on that trinomial. Let's keep the 4bx there as well. So two binomials. We need two numbers that add to give you negative 1, if you want to look at it that way, and they multiply to give you negative 20. Well, if they multiply to give you negative, of course, one has to be negative and one's positive. So what two factors of negative 20 also add to give you negative 1? And the answer is 4, positive, and a negative 5. And that is what you'll have as your answer. There you go. We're just doing two types of factoring in one problem. Okay, try this one. Copy that now. Now this is looks kind of funky here. Okay, if you notice, you, at first you might go, oh, I got it. This is like a, you think, oh, wait a minute. 
this first term with the, ace, with the squared is a negative. We're not used to doing that, which we're not. We don't do those. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull, we're going to divide this by a negative one, and of course everything else in that uh, expression, to make sure that the first term is a positive a squared. So because that's what we're used to doing. Because look, this isn't, you know, that's right here. This is a positive x squared. This back here is a positive x squared, and so on. We want that first one to be positive as well. So what we'll do is we'll just pull out a negative one and then see what we have. And of course, if you divide by negative one, every term in here is just going to change sign. That's all that's going to happen. So that's going to be positive a squared. That'll be negative a, and it'll be negative 20. All right, and of course, we recognize this trinomial. So you can go negative one and then knock this into two chunks here. That'll be an a there and an a there. And of course, this negative you know, one here and the negative 20, well, that's just like the one we just did in the last slide. So we know the two uh, factors will be positive 4 and negative 5. And there we go. And this doesn't disappear, that negative 1. It stays there. So don't drop it because you'll need to go ahead and have that. Now, it's possible in your book that they won't, have, they won't have a 1 there. They might just have a negative on the outside of that. Fine. Same thing. You just you multiply by negative 1. Okay. All right. Try this one. Copy that down. Pause, give it you know, pause if you want to. All right, um, again, we have a negative first term, which we know. We look at this, we go x to the third, x to the second, x to the... Okay, so we're going to pull an x out of there. But we can't just pull an x out of there. And, of course, you'll probably recognize 3 goes into all three of these as well. We do want to pull out a negative because we want the first term to be a positive x squared. So we're just going to pull out a negative 3 and then an x right there. This 3 goes into all those, x goes into all those. We want to make sure we divide by a negative, so the first term we have is a positive. So you tell me, what is negative 3x to the third divided by negative 3x? That's going to be a positive, right? And x cubed divided by x to the first is x to the second. All right? Now, a negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2. And x squared divided by x is just x. Now, this time in positive 72 divided by negative 3 will give you negative, and you can do this on paper if you need to, 24, and then x divided by x is just 1. So there we go. Now, let's go ahead and copy down our negative 3x and punch this into two binomials, and we have a number that multiplies to give us negative 24 and adds to give us positive 2. Well, we know it's got to be a positive and negative. So you tell me, what are the two factors of negative 24? If you add them together, they equal positive 2. And probably you see, oh, that's going to be a positive 6 and a negative 4. And there you go. Okay. All right. That looks pretty good. Okay. The second part of this is called subscripted variables. We'll look at what, an example of what these are in a second. But you remember, remember how to do these. We've done two ways of solving these kinds of problems. Either... You can do substitution. In other words, you can pull this over here and go, oh, I'll have x equals 16 minus y, and then put that back into here and then solve with an equation with all the y's. Or we can do what's called elimination. Remember that. You can you know, make sure that you have five x's, you know, multiply by five, or you know, you can multiply by 10, so you have the same number of y's and everything else. 10x plus 10y plus 160. Do the subtraction or addition or whatever, and boom, you got it. Sometimes you will see, and as we get closer and farther in this year, in, in your book, you're going to see this kind of thing right here. Now look at that. Looks quite complicated, okay? Because they have what, they, what is called subscripted variables. Sub meaning Latin for under. So these subscripted variables have these little numbers or letters, excuse me, uh, down here. So, but actually, if you look at look at look at both of those problems, look at you know this set and then that set, okay? They're really the same thing. You've got 5 times a number plus 10 times a number is 125. Well, 5 times a number plus 10 times a number is 125. This was just a number plus a different number is 16. Well, there's a number plus a different number is 16. Just be aware that you can write this problem like this. So anytime you see something like this, you can go ahead and do the same thing. In other words, you could go, oh, I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 5. 5, in, and this is red, by the way. 5n sub n plus 5n sub d, and then you multiply 16 by 5, and then 
yoink, if you do that, then you can subtract that minus that is gone. 10 of those minus 5 of those is 5 of n sub d's. Then 125 minus 80 is 45. And then you would just do the same old thing. Divide by 5, you know, n sub d is 9. Then you would just pop it back in there and figure out, you know, n sub n next. You treat it just the same way. In fact, just kind of get yourself used to looking at ones like that and don't be too intimidated by them because eventually the kind of problems we're going to be doing, uh, they're called uh, distance and rate and time problems. And we'll be using these. But, um, you know, if they're a little confusing at first, you can always look at a uh, problem like this and just mentally or even on paper, just turn it into this. You know, a number here and a number there. You can put A or B or X or Y, whatever you want to do. So you, but you solve this type that looks kind of funky on the right the same way you did this type of problem right here. You treat it exactly the same. I'd go ahead and do this for a couple of months anyway, just till you get used to it. Then in the future, when you're used to it, you can go ahead and save yourself a little bit of time if it's easier for you to write that down or solve or whatever. So that is exactly the same problem we just did. We won't bother to do that one because we didn't actually find the answer except for n sub d. I guess we could finish it up. You know, what the heck. All right, we could go, let's just go back to this one here and solve it. So 5n sub n, I'm just going to write that over, 5n, 5n sub n plus 10 times n sub d, that'd be 90, equals 125. So 5n sub n equals 125 minus 90, that's 35. And then n sub n equals 35 divided by 5, which is that. You can check it in the other one if you want. 1's 9, one seven. Oop, they both equal 16 if you add them together, not with, you know, not having multiplied by 5 and so on. So there you go. All right, let's try another one. This is a different one. And take a sec, copy this down. And heck with this, I'm not using elimination to solve this. <laughs> a lot easier way to do this is to do uh, substitution, because this is already ready for substitution right there. So this might be, just so you'll know what, what you're getting into it one of these days, you're going to have a, um, sometime in the future, they'll give you a word problem that says, you know, Charlie had a number of nickels, n sub n, a number of nickels. He also had a number of quarters, q for quarter. He had $2.90 or 290 cents total. The number of quarters, you know, there were two more quarters than there were nickels. So that was the number of quarters is the same as the number of nickels plus two, so there are more quarters. How many of each did he have? And you'll have to come up with those two equations yourself. At this point, the genius, again, of Saxon is that we're just practicing doing those problems first. Eventually, after months of doing this, or weeks, or whatever, you'll be writing those equations yourself based on the pair, little short paragraph that they give you. So, anyhow, I'm going to sub, uh, substitute here. And let's just take this equation here and move it over. So in the number of quarters is the number of nickels plus two. So I'm just going to keep writing. I'm going to write the first thing, copy that. Then I'll write 25. Instead of writing the number of quarters, I'm going to write this. So the number of nickels plus two, that equals 290. So 5n sub n plus 25n sub n plus 25 times two equals 290. Let's uh, knock that over there. 290 minus 50 is 240. And this will be 30. 30 times the number of nickels is 240. Well, you can cross off zeros and you know that 3 goes into 24 8 times. So that tells us in this problem that the number of nickels is 8. All right. The number of quarters then we can easily find because we just add 2 to it, right? So the number of quarters would be 8 plus 2 or 10. There we go. By the way, let's check it. How much money is 10 quarters? Right? Okay. How much money is 8 nickels? How much money do you have? 40. How much is this? How much money is that altogether? What's the number of cents? Anyway, just proving that it works. And again, eventually you'll be writing these two equations. You'll be thinking them up yourself. Okay. All right. Try A, B, C, and D. First try A, go ahead and pause it. We'll do that together in a second. All right, we're gonna factor here. Of course, we want this first term with the highest exponent value to be positive, so we're gonna factor 
out, and four goes into all of those, and then we'll go x goes into all of those as well. So when we, multiply, when we divide a negative by a negative, we get a positive, x squared, and negative divided by negative is also a positive, that'll be seven x, and the last one will be negative 48 divided by negative four is positive 12. All right, and this is what we're focusing on now. I need two numbers. They multiply to give me 12, and they add to give me seven. What are they? And of course, they are four and three. And you could put plus three here, and then plus four over there, it didn't matter what order, so. Okay, pause it and try B. Well, I don't like the way this is set up. I'm gonna put this in a nice order here. X, negative x squared plus two x, and then plus 24. Let's get that in a nice order there. And we're gonna divide by negative one, because we don't want this first term to be negative. So divide by negative one. You can put a one there if you want to. You don't have to, all right? We will get x squared minus two x minus 24, all right? Keep your minus outside there. Now we're gonna do two binomials. And one's an x and one's an x. The product is negative, so we know one of those will be plus and one of those will be minus. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 24 and add to give you negative two? Well, the answer is positive four and negative six, and there you go. And again, you might have written this in that order. That'd also be fine, no problem. As long as you have the negative attached to the six and the positive attached to the four. Okay, all right, try C. Pause that and see what you get. All right, well, at least they let us use substitution on this one, right? So this, the n number of quarters, let's just, you know, talk about what this is. This is a problem. They're telling you uh, six times the number of nickels. I don't know why in the world they put that. That's weird. Anyway, um, all right, um, substitute here. We'll put the number of quarters in there. We will say six times the number of whatever that is, n sub n, plus the funny nickels that they're six cents a piece, or anyway. N sub Q is the same thing as N sub N plus five. That equals 360, okay? So six times N sub N plus 24 N sub N plus 24 times five is 120. That's 360. I'm gonna subtract 120 from 360, give me 240. This will be 30 times N sub N is 240. Hack, hack, three times what gives you 24? And the answer is eight. So uh, n sub n is 8, all right? Then this becomes very easy. n sub q is just going to be 8 plus 5, or 13. There you go. Okay. Um, all right, pause it. Try the last one. Okay, now they want you to use elimination to solve this thing. So, I mean, I'm thinking the easiest thing to do is just multiply the bottom by 6. So, I'll just kind of do this as it, as it is already. So, 6 times that plus 6 times that is 12 times 6, which is 72. There we go. That's nice and fat and blue looking. Okay. All right. Now let's subtract, obviously, because these need to go away. So 12 n sub d minus 6 n sub d is also 6 n sub d. 108 minus 72 is good gravy. All right. It's 108. Okay. If we do the division, and of course you can do long division, we're going to get n sub d is equal to 18. All right. There we go. Now we can go back here and, you know, anywhere we want to. Uh, let's just go to n sub d here. I'm going to go to the original problem. This was the original problem. Okay. So n sub n plus n sub d, that's 18, equals 12. So n sub n is equal to 12 minus 18 or negative 6. There we go. Okay. All right. See you guys next time. Have a good day.